What you're seeing here is a portfolio piece that I did with V-Ray for Blender. And today I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about my feelings for it and compare it to Cycles a little bit. Um, I did this with Chaos Cosmos assets, uh, which come with your subscription to V-Ray for Blender, if you don't know. So I did not uh, grab those, I like that wood material. I didn't make that in Substance Designer or anything like that. And I didn't just grab it off the internet. It comes with V-Ray for Blender. And overall, I think the results are as expected. They're amazing. Like, why wouldn't they be? V-Ray has been around for a while. It's been known as an industry standard, uh, especially very, very popular in the 3DS Max community. And it's just been a weird situation in Blender because 99%-ish of the Blender community is still married to Cycles and Eevee. So what happens is most people just aren't switching over. Now the B-roll footage you're gonna see throughout the majority of this video is just me going through the documentation that Chaos created on docs.chaos.com if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just showing you how I did in fact go through these tutorials. I did heavily edit them out and just speed them up 500% just to give you something to, to watch while I'm talking about my thoughts here. Now, the situation with uh, Cycles and Eevee has been a weird one because the vast majority of the community just hasn't moved over. Um, Maxon didn't really milk Redshift and they're already, at least at the time, whether it's permanent or not, no longer working on the Redshift for Blender. Now there is definitely a Blender Octane. Uh, you guys can help me out with this one because honestly I tried it and I was just completely confused by the situation and even now trying to get this video uploaded I admit I've been I've been doing a little bit of research and I'm still kind of confused by the situation like there's you go onto a toys website and you tell it like you're gonna download a trial version and then you can download a full Blender Octane file like it's a different blender and you have to download this like server primer as well um, there's also a add-on that you can find in like the, the, the uh, toy forums, I believe. And based on what I'm seeing, it looks like there's been some recent updates to that recently. And it, it can work with your regular blender that you download from blender.org. Again, like I'm just, this is me guessing. I'm, I'm not sure what the situation is. So I remember at the time just being confused, like the installation seemed complicated. I just wasn't sure what was going on. So I ended up just moving on and giving up on that. So again, it was like there wasn't that many people using it. So my dedication to it was very limited. So it, it just wasn't for me. I know that Render Man for Blender was released a while back and I remember uh, messing around with the trial of it for maybe a day and then just, I haven't heard anything about it ever since then. And there's just been this kind of feeling like the Blender community just likes cycles, they like Eevee, and they're just not switching over. So when something comes out, people are just kind of like, well, why bother? Why bother switching over? Especially when cycles and Eevee are free and they come with Blender. So when V-Ray for Blender comes out, which to be fair, it's kind of came back out um, a long time ago. I think it was prior to 2.8, there was a V-Ray for Blender and it, if I'm not mistaken from my research, basically it wasn't well supported, it had issues, and then they just kind of kind of let it go. Kind of like the way Redshift just disappeared from Maxon, so. This is a completely new VRA for Blender, which was made from the ground up, according to Chaos. And I have no problem saying that I want it to succeed, is it makes no sense to me why it wouldn't be great to have all these different alternatives so that people in the community can use whatever they like. So if you don't like cycles, you don't like EV, if you wanna use any of these other renders, that'd be great. So first of all, let me just say that in my opinion, V-Ray, the quality speaks for itself. If you just go online, you see what the work that's been done with it, it speaks for itself. The, the results are amazing and they're going to be amazing here in, in V-Ray for Blender. 
Um, the, the quality of it is great, and the speed of it is great, the features are great, and you're seeing the, the history states that you see me using there. There are these post-effect layers that you see in the upper right corner. You have the light mix in the bottom right corner, which is maybe a little overrated, but it's still it's nice to have. Um, there's, there's a lot of just small features he, here and there that, that just sort of take it over the top. Um, I mentioned the Chaos Cosmos assets. Basically, I don't have exact numbers off the top of my head, forgive me for that, but basically you get assets from Chaos. Um, the, uh, the system is just integrated in. You just, it's in the menu. If you see the V-Ray menu up in the top, uh, you just click on there that Cosmos assets are in there. You can easily just download models, materials, HDRs, and as soon as you download those HDRs, it just it just chugs it in as a skylight. And you basically get that with your subscription. You now, Vera for Blender is somewhere around 200 bucks a year, if I'm not mistaken, USD. And last time I checked, a subscription for a whole year access to Polygon was around 550 USD, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. So if those assets are of value to you, you could even say that VRA for Blender kind of pays for itself. So if you looked at the assets and you thought this is good enough, this would uh, you know, stop me from having to purchase assets somewhere else, or maybe even cut back some of the assets that I'm paying for, it might pay for itself and you'd just be like, well, I'm getting VRA along with those assets as a, as a valuable subscription. Some people in the community have complained over time that they don't like V-Ray, they don't like the way it works, they felt like maybe it just wasn't fun or it was too complicated for them. I personally did not experience that myself. I thought it was very intuitive myself. Um, um, I do appreciate the way it tries to utilize uh, real world tech, like your, your settings on your camera to help to mimic the way things work in real life because that helps you to translate your knowledge, your research that you have of the way cameras work in real life, the way lights work in real life, and to try to mimic that in the 3D software. I do appreciate that. But overall, I think V-Ray wins in the vast majority of categories. Um, I have no problem saying um, in the vast majority of ways it's better. now. At the time of this recording, this is October 2025, we have Blender 5 coming out pretty soon, and I have been paying attention to the things that they've been saying. Uh, Christopher 3D has been doing some great videos talking about the Asus 2.0 being implemented in there. Um, I, as much as anybody, have been uh, just not really a fan of the way uh, Cycles AGX color management creates hazy, blurry, desaturated spots on your materials and it's, it's just something like uh, Christopher's videos have been well documenting that it's just kind of an objective reality that it gives that result and it's always been like to me it makes me want to take my renders and always just crank up the vibrance or the saturation a lot so the timing of it is odd because cycles over the years the color management has been notoriously bad and it's been it's just been behind in terms of quality of realism and color management, uh, the speed of the render compared to most of the other renders. But it keeps getting better, obviously. Every time there's, there's new releases of Blender, which it gets released over and over and over again. Um, over time, um, the 4.0 release was a big deal. They finally got light and shadow linking in there, which is something that other software users have always had. Um, the realism of the render got a little bit better. Uh, we now have normalized features. You know, if you've been using Arnold for years, you've been used to having that. And there's just been ways that, and here and there that features have just been added on and added on. And it's just gotten better over time. So Blender 5 could, like, you know, we'll see what happens. It could really, really put a dent in that, that gap. So the value of this, you know, years ago, I would have thought, this would be a no-brainer, but at this point in time, the value of it is becoming more and more debatable as Blender continues to get improved. So having gushed up all that, I would say V-Ray for Blender wins over Cycles and EV in 
almost every category except one, and it's the biggest one. And it's the most important thing where cycles and EV win hands down, which is that quite frankly, how are you supposed to learn this? How are you supposed to learn this? Because, well, I've already canceled my subscription. This video, is, this recording is a little bit old at this point. Like I found it's like, well, it's brand new. They're just now putting tutorials out with it. Hardly anyone's using it. How do I learn this? Like the entire Cycles Blender, the entire Blender community is married to Cycles and EV. The internet has a plethora of content out there to learn Cycles and EV. And it's like, you're basically on your own. So think about the amount of time it's gonna take you to learn Cycles versus the time it's gonna take you to solve problems with V-Ray. You're kind of on your own. You're going to have to go onto the documentation. You're going to have to hardcore read the manual. You know, you're going to have to, you know, maybe become the first guy to really go hardcore with V-Ray for Blender content out there and have to figure it out yourself. And if you're like me, it's like I've got goals and I want to get there faster than soon, faster than slower. You know what I mean? It's like. Uh, you know, I was using ChatGPT, I admit, to help me out, and it had no idea what was going on. It kept telling me to use nodes that, in the shader network that only existed for cycles. It kept telling me to do things that only existed in uh, V-Ray for 3ds Max or Maya, and it over and over again. I kept telling it no, I, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work. Like I kept trying things. Um, overall, I was just getting frustrated with the process despite the fact that I did very much appreciate the product. So like when you're assessing the value of anything you have to consider your time. So it's like at some point you go, you know, if I want to use V-Ray, why not just switch to 3ds Max? Because the V-Ray rendering engine is hugely implemented into the culture and ecosystem of 3ds Max. All of the best paywall courses, YouTube videos, and so on and so forth for V-Ray are in the 3ds Max community. Whereas, you know, again, you're not going to find that when you're here on here in the Blender side of things. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. So. If that's valuable to you, if you like the idea of tinkering around with it, figuring out on your on your own, then you might like that. But for most people, it's just going to slow you down. Just like I know, like if your if your dream goal was to become the next Patrick 4D and to just be a you know a, a great like food renderer, it would be really easy to just switch to Cinema 4D because so much of the C4D community is about product visualization. And there's so many tutorials, paywall courses, the, the whole community around C4D really niches into the idea of the, the advertising side of the 3D world. So you would be able to get to that goal much faster and sooner by using C4D, even though you were paying for your software it would be worth it because you would go straight from point A to point Z in a straight line as fast as possible. Whereas in the Blender community, it's it's actually harder because everything is done in Blender. Like you go onto YouTube and there's just thousands of thousands of tutorials to sift through and it's hard to find advanced content through all the basic beginner and intermediate level stuff. So you have to consider the value of your time, your energy, your patience, and just your overall inspiration as to how fast it's going to get you to their goals because you don't want to be in a situation where it's like well i don't want to pay for this so i'm not and just ignore the fact that there might be real advantages in your strategy with your career for doing so if you wanted to make it an ArcViz, the fastest and easiest way to do so would be to just go to 3ds max learn v-ray or corona all the best tutorials and courses, paywall or free, are going to be in that side of things. So even if you had to spend a little bit of money up front, you would probably get to making five, six figure incomes way, way faster that way and end up way, way making up for that expense very quickly. You might find yourself in the Blender community being, well, I don't want to pay for that. So you might find yourself in a situation where years have gone by and you're still not getting work because you're learning things the slowest way possible 
because you're just struggling in a community that's very generalized and maybe your software community around it and the tutorials are just making it harder for you to learn it even though the software is capable i don't have any issues at all whatsoever with people saying i've seen great arcviz renders with cycles but what's my point my point here is is that most people are going to look at this and go i have to pay for v-ray and it's going to make it harder and i'm going to learn my rendering engine slower and I, i'm just going to struggle with it i'm not going to know what the nodes are i'm not going to know how to set up my materials i'm going to have to figure it out myself so what am i paying for what's the value of it and then when cycles is getting better and better and Asus 2.0 is going to be a thing pretty soon. It's like, well, why do I bother at this point? So that is the issue that Chaos has to deal with with this software. I really do hope that it succeeds. I really hope that there are all kinds of great alternatives for Blender users to render their stuff out. I think it's a great product. I really hope that they milk it. I hope that they come up with great tutorials. I hope that they make it way, way easier so that a couple years from now, it'll be way easier and the conversation will be very different. And full disclosure, a lot of this, this is all learning for me because I spend most of my time learning game art and real-time 3D. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and take care.